I have been involved in some form of instruction for most of my adult life. As a young man, I recall working in the construction industry and having to guide and direct other workers, and then as an instructor in a variety of more direct instruction capacities in K-12, and for the past 30 plus years in higher education. I noticed that some people have a capacity or the mindset to receive feedback, and too many didn't. Those who are not open to feedback often do not see effort as being necessary or useful. They tend to view challenges as bad instruction. There is also a tendency for these people to argue that mistakes are not made by A students. So errors must be avoided, and when experienced, they cause great discouragement and even anger. This mindset also led to these people viewing feedback as personal criticism, so they tended to get defensive or even angry. In contrast, those who were more open to feedback viewed effort as useful and would lead to growth and challenges were embraced and often viewed as opportunities. Mistakes were often used to learn how to improve. Feedback was appreciated because these people welcomed the opportunity to receive input on how to improve. I was not the only one seeing these patterns and impacts on the different mindsets. In the early 2000s, I learned from Carol Dweck's research that some learners have a fixed mindset, which means that they view intelligence, abilities, and talents as inherently stable and unchangeable. In contrast, people with a growth mindset view intelligent abilities and talents as learnable and capable of improvement through effort. I started to point my students to Carol Dweck's work on mindset and used a variety of resources to help students move from a fixed to a growth mindset. Dweck's notion of not yet became very popular with many of my students, but I started to see that just applying the growth mindset as a treatment didn't yield the results I wanted. Once again, I wasn't alone in my observations. Getting students to adopt a growth mindset is a great start, but it wasn't enough. In a recent meta-analysis on the effects of mindsets on achievement, researchers found applying the growth mindset as a treatment didn't make any difference in student achievement, and in their discussion, they suggested other factors would need to be considered. Similarly, Alfie Cohen argues that asking students to move to a growth mindset is comparable to the Just Say No to Drugs campaign of the 90s. Great sentiments, but neither had a significant impact because until you change the environment, nothing else will change. I suggest that the growth mindset is a wonderful starting point to help the learner compensate for the fixed mindset thinking that is so prevalent in our information transfer and test-based educational system, but is only the starting point. If we really want our learners to be open to feedback, and see challenges as opportunities for growth, we need to help them move into or reignite their learner's mindset. The learner's mindset is a state of being where people act on their intrinsic capacity to learn and respond to their inquisitive nature that leads to viewing all interactions with the world as learning opportunities. This state enables one to interact with and influence the learning environment as a perpetual learner who has the capacity to change and view challenges as opportunities for growth. When you are in the learner's mindset, you are like a fish in water. You don't think about it because it is basic to everything that you do. Moving into or adopting this state of being requires that you change your thinking about learning, your approach to helping yourself and your learners learn how to learn, and by changing the learning environment. In this module, we will help you to reignite your learner's mindset and point you to resources that you need to do the same for your learners, which will help prepare them to not only receive, but welcome your feed forward.